once the machine is on my trail, I, I didn't have to drive it. These guys here are awesome. I got a surprise for you guys. Pleasant surprise. I just wanted to show you the real heavy haul rig. So this guy came after me. He brought this uh, dozer and a couple of blades. And I look at his trailer. This guy is massive. You know, he has four axles. So right away, right away, of course, I ran over and said, you know, can you gain anything with the fourth axle? Because I've been thinking about, you know, whether I should add the fourth axle to my to my um, trailer. And this guy, he says empty. He weighs 30 tons. So he was talking in tons. I think he means short tons. So he has a JC trailers. I know they made in, in Ontario. So he has a 20,000 pound steer axle. He says the push are pretty much the same as mine, four tires, but his uh, drives are large rubber, right? He has a huge gooseneck, and then he says his trailer is uh, rated for 100 tons, 100 tons. And I asked him, I said, is it okay if I measure your axle in the back there? And uh, sure enough, they were all 60 inches. And as you can see, he has a, he has a air lift on the last axle. But, so that's the heavy hole, yeah. So this guy, he says uh, he can do, uh, you know, lots of weight, but then, then of course the problem is that you become too heavy, you know, like, you see, and he's a day cap, so basically he doesn't travel overnight probably, unless they pay for his, uh, well, he says trucking and paving. So he does, he works for a company that does construction. And so, um, very old but very strong trailer like unbelievable has uh, folding ramps all rusted but you know uh, nice D-rings all bent bent not straight D-rings but bent D-rings you know so that's how you haul heavy stuff in in Ontario Canada see large spread lots of axles you know and I've been here many times before and it's very tricky to get out of this place. And you come through there, this uh, cat dealer, and I said, is it okay if I back in here? See, so I went in there and then I backed in here, like between the machines. I'm not in anybody's way, so I know here this is like a driveway, they always go through here. You see this way, that guy, it's pretty tight in there. And now he's, he'll go and turn around there. Um, but I can just leave from here. So... You know, every day you learn something in trucking, like, that's what I like about this, like, it's never boring, like, you always see new stuff, you see new equipment, and, uh, just love this stuff, you know. Uh, but I definitely, yeah, that, that's not the trailer, like, for me, I want to be light, I want to be as low as possible, I want to be as light as possible, and all I can do, like, with seven axles, and Canada, Ontario, Canada is much more liberal than U.S. All I can do is the heaviest load that would allow me to carry the load weight is 90,000 pounds. And I never once I did something like that. The heaviest one, if you remember, there was a video I did uh, crane housing. It was 87,000 pounds. And that was, it felt so heavy, but back then I had a... 391 ratio right and I had a standard exhaust like now my truck is much stronger like it pulls much much better So now and that was first time so now I can do I feel like you know I, I, I can be okay with a 90,000 pound low, but that's all I can, I can get so 90,000 that's 45 short tons, right? and I got a 55 ton trailer so So But I already sent the spec and the, the engineer uh, emailed me, he said they're going to meet, uh, they wanted to meet Monday today, but he says now they're going to meet Tuesday or Wednesday, like with the design team, because I asked for some customization of the trailer to make it lighter. Um, so they're going to get back to me and tell me, like, give me the quote, and then we'll go from there. And this week I have to meet the, the buyer, and I still haven't figured out what to do with the chains and binders. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe I should sell them. To this guy but he's asking me like how much you want so i know i spent like two thousand bucks probably new like for chains and binders jesus hot in here okay now i gotta go to a truck stop send an email to my dispatch load delivered and we'll go from there i uh, just finished unloading and i didn't want to drive like four hours back to 
Toronto and there's no food here like this Petro Pass and I get some sausage it's pretty good you know, mild 10 bucks Canadian but 16 grams of protein uh, very little carbs hold on what is this guy there? trying to steal my trailer oh no they're changing changing trailers never mind false alarm yeah and you remember I said <laughs> I don't want to have coffee after after lunch but yeah the, like what else I cannot eat cookies I cannot eat all this junk over there so that sausage was the least damaging food I found what I wanted to do and in advance I'm sorry for the audio but I closed all uh, I closed the windows so I know quite soon I'll be very hot because all my vents are closed and I had a fan running I can put another one my favorite fan I put it on the windshield visor so cut a long story short yeah I was just looking at a lot of people were asking questions and I thought I would do like a brief like not more than two three hours uh, questions and answers session okay what is in the works for a new trailer um I know the specs I already sent it to to Kaufman and they're gonna uh, I thought it was Monday that they were meeting to talk about I asked them to make the trailer lighter just basically a couple of custom options in there but now I got the email from the engineer saying that they're gonna do it either tomorrow, Tuesday or Wednesday. And then I'll know how low it is, how light it is and how much it costs. I also called a couple of local uh, trailer dealers for just, you know, see, just to compare. Um, I think I called a Talbert dealer and then XL, but nobody got back to me, just got an email. Or oh, I'll call you in the afternoon to discuss the specs. So I recorded a message to the guy. You know how you can... My favorite form of communication now is I start the recorder on my smartphone. I record a voice message and then I email it to to the guy. So it's so convenient, you know, like... Much better than voicemail. You just click on the attachment, you can listen to it, right? And so I said voice message from Sergey about the specs to this Talbert guy. It's 4.59 now, and he sent me the email at like 9 in the morning. I'm on the road today, but in the afternoon I'm going to be in Milton, and I will call you to discuss the specs. So he never did. So I guess Milton, Ontario is the only place where his cell phone works. So I'm telling you, like all these big uh, trailer names, it's like the guys are so lazy, you know, like they you call them you then you call them again you email them you know oh he'll come back you know we know our brand is the best so i don't want to speculate you know what's in the works for a new trailer because some things might change but the idea is to make more money with the trailer so uh, based on what i know now on what loads i hold over the past two years with this trailer I know what I can kind of like, you know, fine tune to make the trailer more productive, okay? Uh, one guy says he missed the video about my extra ratio change. I post the link in there. Yeah, that was uh, like uh, when uh, fall of 2015 when I got finally tired of shifting gears and all these crazy hills in Pennsylvania, New York and like West Virginia, Virginia. 410 is much better I'm very happy and truck pulls like great I almost pretty much never recollect the 15 liter cat especially now after I changed the, the exhaust I'm telling you the truck big difference especially if I compare to the first like month when I had the truck when it was still breaking in unbelievable like 
Uh, I'm serious. I don't even miss the 15 liter engine. Uh, one guy said he really has zero idea of the, of the significance of Gettysburg. And I'm sorry, you know, I'm an alien. Born in Hungary, grew up in Russia, and I don't recollect seeing that question on my Canadian citizen exam or on my class AZ trucker exam. But I know it was a big deal, but I just saw a couple of videos, but don't just hold it against me, right? Like, not everybody is American. I hope you make some videos on buying a new trailer and picking it up and giving us a tour of it. And when I see people write it like that, I always wonder, like, how many people in the household are watching my my channel you know what is your top cruising speed versus rpm now with the lower gearing of 410 compared to what it was okay i guess i can answer that well first of all a lot of people probably know that i don't drive fast i always try to preserve fuel and i never changed my fuel computer so from day one including the those uh, two three bad months when i know the truck was pretty bad on fuel because it was breaking in there was no power um, so from day one until today and I got the truck in November 2014 so this November in 2016 will be two years I now have about uh, just over 100,000 miles 175,000 kilometers um, and so with 391 oh and Max says the best RPM range like most fuel efficient range for this truck is 1350 to 1450 and a lot of people say that actually it's not that like 1350 forget that but it's more like 1400 to 1450 because it's a smaller engine right it needs RPM so I'm just staying usually when I'm cruising at 1400 and all that's changed so I'm not changing I didn't change my RPM and that's a major thing that a lot of uh, people, uh, you know, don't understand. Oh, you're gonna lose fuel when you change ratio. Yeah, you're gonna lose fuel if you keep driving like 80 miles an hour, right? But if you understand the the implications of what's gonna happen, like your RPM goes up, right? When you switch from 391 to 410, I have this formula. I knew exactly, uh, pretty much like 90% what my RPM will be and before i used to drive a bit faster i would when i was empty i would do like 100 kilometers an hour 62 miles an hour and the truck would would have 1450 rpm at 62 miles an hour with 391 so now i i pretty much lost like two miles no uh three miles so now if i'm at 59 miles per hour i'm at 1450 okay so now 59 then it was 62 but i don't miss it it's like the difference is negligible all i do now is just that's what i i, I keep my rpm between 1400 and 1450 and when i'm heavy and i go through some hilly terrain i know the truck needs you know like at least 1430 but 1450 is better it pulls much better than at 1400 so with this one so with this 410 i do 57 miles an hour at 1400 RPM and I do 59 miles an hour at 59 and that's my cruising speed 57 to 59 so I drive slow because uh, I'm paid percentage I'm not paid by the mile so the more fuel I burn the smaller my paycheck becomes um, okay uh, a couple of more questions Do, 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 do. Uh, one guy says I'm surprised Kaufman won't take the trailer on trade for you for the upgrade well actually that was the plan but they told me right from the start that they don't do it right because they do have a financing department but you know 
I'm in Canada, right there in the States, so it's two different countries. And again, some people forget that, that, you know, they were very, they were extremely nice to me, uh, you know, honoring the warranty, even, even though I'm across the border, right? So they replaced, they fix their, if you remember the orange trailer, right? So gray is the new orange, watch that video. Um, and then when I had problems with the Honda, they replaced the Honda, I got a brand new motor, which is like thousand bucks US, you know? So that's why, like my major priority is go back to Kaufman because they've been really good to me and I just, customer service is unbelievable. But, they, and I, I did ask them, so I said, maybe we can do it like that, you know, like, like you bring a car, you take a car to a dealer and you upgrade to a new car, right? And they said they never did it like that, but they will talk. Uh, they will they will talk to the boss, to the owner, um, and they just you know that's not how they do things, and that's fine. So I found I found a buyer. Um, I'm getting some money out of a deal that I can put towards the new trailer and make the trailer better. Now that I know what to change and uh, I saw like you saw that video let's talk about low boy trailers they changed the design of their trailer so now there's like for example like the D-rings like to me it's such a big deal because I work with them all the time and that's like major thing a lot of people would not think twice about it but the new D-rings that at, at the top of the deck it makes life of a truck is so much easier you wouldn't believe and so yeah everything's fine so you know it's a plant right so in let's say you buy um, usually you have to work with uh, with a dealer where you bought the stuff when you want to do an upgrade right not with the factory but of course in this case they do direct uh, sales um, and I bought the trailer directly from them but I guess you know they still want to separate like the dealership functions from the factory otherwise it'll be like too much hassle too much paperwork so I'm okay with that I'm just I'm just looking forward again to bobtailing that was like I still I still remember like that trip when I bobtailed my my, my first and then my second low boy trailer I bobtail there you know whistling singing Russian songs you know enjoying the scenery of uh, southern US and I go there and get my trailer hook it up and bring it to Canada well I hope this time uh, I know all the tricks like what's required to basically import the trailer to Canada because it's not easy but I went through this once um, I can do it again but and that, but that's another reason why I was why I contacted some local crazy dealers in Ontario uh, because they are trailers you know when you buy something from them usually they just and, and you say you want to pick it up in the States because most of them are like uh, what is this Talbert right Talbert I think it's Indiana Indiana or Illinois but somewhere like six seven hours from here and a lot of times when I buy trailers, and I never bought a trailer yet that was built in Canada. They're all in the states, like Iowa, you know, South Carolina, Illinois, Indiana. I always ask them that I want to go there pick it up because this way they they take like two grand off the price of the trailer. So why not? I already have the truck, right? Why do I have to pay somebody to bring the trailer here? But the best part about this, uh, of course, it's more expensive buying from a Canadian dealer when the trailer is made in the States because of course the you know the price they have to make their money Canadian dollar is weak compared to US dollar 1.3 uh, like one US dollar is now worth 1.3 Canadian so let's say hundred thousand dollars US that's hundred thirty thousand Canadian so everything that's made in the States becomes 30 percent more expensive in Canada automatically plus we have 13 percent sales tax which you don't want to get me started on but I get it back on business purchases so I'm okay with that but the best part about buying from a Canadian dealer in my experience is that 
when everything is done, you know, you sign, you find a financing company or you finance it through them, right? Everything is ready, you give them the deposit. They go and get the license plate, even when the trailer is still in US, you know? And then they tell me, okay, the trailer is ready. You can go and pick it up. They give me all the documents already. I don't think they're supposed to, but they're giving me all, basically everything is already registered with Canada. For all intents and purposes, the trailer is already imported, you know? So they give me all the documents, the registration, the license plate, and that happened like two or three times, you know? I go there, I go to the plant, I show them my paperwork, show them a couple of videos from my YouTube channel, gain a couple of new subscribers, and screw the license plate on, and back then, I think it was uh, the one I remember, is the three axle step. I, w I think I went to a Transcraft. I went to a Transcraft plant somewhere in Midwest. But anyway, so I was with Landstar, so I did inspection. I think they, yeah, they did it. Landstar sent, uh, they required this DOT inspection right from the plant. So she, uh, the lady emailed me, you know, the form. I went to talk to the chief mechanic there at Transcraft plant. The guy did a quick inspection, signed it. I mailed everything. I emailed everything to Landstar. And I already had insurance, proof of insurance. I had the license plate already on the trailer. Boom, boom, boom. You know, half an hour, the trailer was already on the system, on the Landstar system, showing under my truck number and with the new trailer number. So it's so much it's you know so less much less hassles basically when you buy locally and that's of course that's a big thing you know but south carolina is not that far i can maybe find it like a bump tail load going there right and you never know but now i already talked to my dispatcher said that i'm transferring the trailer this week uh the buyer someone in the states on the way here and all the paperwork is signed and I thought I'm, I will do another short load, but there's nothing. I'm still at Sunbury, right? probably. I'll stay here and I'll start driving tomorrow morning. Because it's pretty far, like, to, from here to Toronto, like, five hours, you know. Uh, and so, yeah, the dispatch said uh, they'll give me one of their trailers. So now my percentage pay will go down by 10%. But that's okay. At least I will not have a trailer payment for another six, eight weeks. That's what it takes to have a new trailer uh, built. Okay, one guy, last. One guy says, oh, he left a comment under that. Let's talk about low boy trailers. He wrote, that is a hang up nightmare in the making. Unless I'm paid thousand dollars a mile, I wouldn't even think about it. That's not safe. Uh, well, if it wasn't safe, these trailers probably would have a difficult time finding buyers because then people would be getting tickets and stuff like that. What's not safe is a mechanical detached 35 ton uh, trailer that a lot of old guys are so so in love with because that trailer, especially when it's uh, loaded to the max, it sits like one inch off the ground and with that trailer it's not safe to go over the tracks because there's nothing you can do unless you install a custom uh, airbag um, height regulator on the truck. So there's no way for you to adjust the height, you know. And quite often that's that's uh, how people get into trouble, you know. And that's one of the major reasons why I got the trailer with hydraulic controls. Like on my trailer, I can go like standard I, I keep it at 24 inches of the ground like the top of the deck so I have about eight inches of the ground I can go two inches lower I can go two inches higher or if it's a particularly dangerous situation as long as I keep the truck and trailer in one line I can raise it like this much you know but then the trailer is not gonna be sitting on blocks so Kaufman says you gotta have you can use that only like in emergencies you know uh, but I can still raise it all the way to the top like I said probably like a, almost like a flatbed trailer but I cannot turn 
because if I start turning I can damage the trail but for a brief moment going in a straight line let's say if there's some you know big moose lying on the road and there's no way to bypass them I can do that so hydraulic detached trailers a great mechanical I pain in the butt and by the way mechanicals they're not lighter I did a comparison uh, quite often they're actually heavier they cost more nowadays and it's a much bigger pain to to hook up and unhook because you have to do it twice you know like hydraulics are, it's a dream once you try hydraulic trailers you will never go back to mechanical it's kind of like automatic and manual transmission you know anyway that's it that's the end of this uh, video uh, so what I'm doing today is Monday right so I don't have a load it's already 17 minutes past 5 my dispatch left so I'll just sleep here and go home tomorrow morning Tuesday and hopefully they were waiting the leasing company was waiting for a deposit check from my buyer uh, they said once they have that they can release my check what I'm getting out of this deal and then I can give the trailer I can arrange the meeting with the new with the buyer and that's it and then I'm uh, trailerless um, I'll be bobtailing around and then I have to figure out what I'm doing with my current company and you know I'm, am, am I gonna change trailers all the time or are they gonna give me like a dedicated trailer for these six to eight weeks and uh, and then of course I didn't place the order yet I have I'm waiting for Kaufman to I have little uh, hope that these guys from Talbert or Excel are gonna call me back within the next week like they're just too lazy uh, so I'll probably 99.999 percent the next trailer will be Kaufman black three axles um, and basically yeah, I'm just waiting I'm waiting for everybody I'm waiting for the check I'm waiting for Kaufman to give me the quote and they have to figure out how to make it lighter so that's what we're doing you know like it's like a regular thing in trucking rush 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 and then wait 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 you know take care Ciao, до свидания.